This is Twit. Oh, hacking well, the satellite! Yes, that was that was absolutely terrifying. Um, I chatted up the subhead there. PhD student admits he probably shouldn't have given this talk. Was from a comment in the Q and A section, <laughs> but that was abs- was really disturbing because they, you know, they they were looking at low Earth or, or orbit satellites and they asked manufacturers for the specs. Very few of them actually followed through. They picked three, and of those, two out of the three had absolutely no protection whatsoever when it came to authentication or encryption, um, and could easily be taken over or hijacked by ransomware operators or whatever. Um, the larger one did, but the problem with larger satellites is that they tend to be made of special, uh, sorry, of commercial space components. Whereas if you're building a CubeSat, you build it yourself with custom stuff. Um, and then possibly the worst was. Almost none of these can be updated with security systems from the ground because if you've got a satellite in low Earth orbit, everything in that design is tuned right down to the milliwatt as what they can do, what they can't do, what functions to do. And if you're throwing an authentication or an encryption app in there, that's going to completely banjax the power settings and probably oh. be possible. And, you know, it's the big problem with satellite hacking is that everyone thought they were safe. Uh, because who's going to build a ground station to to you know hack a satellite? It turns out ten grand's worth of kit you can build. Wasn't your that own. the plot in some James Bond movies? <laughs> Feels I mean, like going back a ways. Of actually, Ernst Stavros Blofeld is yes. clocking down his credit card right now. Well, you can do that though. AWS and Azure both sell a ground station as a service, um, so you can actually just slap down the credit card and communicate with the satellite if you've got the right protocols. Uh, I love the uh, quote that you publish in uh, your article on the register. People think satellites are secure, said Johannes Vilbold, the PhD student who presented. These are expensive assets, and they should have encryption and authentication. I assume criminals think the same, and they are too hard to target, and you need to be some kind of cryptography genius. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to give this talk. <laughs> 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 too late! So uh, you do need to access to somehow talk to the satellite, and it's not encrypted. So what can you do though? You can't bring it down. No. Well, okay. Uh, there are a number. Of, there are there are sort of a number of attack vectors that you could use this for. Uh, I think <clears throat> probably the most likely one is um, ransomware or other criminals getting in there and just disabling the satellite and men then messaging the operator. And saying, <laughs> th um, you know, if, your satellite, if you want your satellite you ever back, see send it again. A number of oh, Bitcoin man. To here. oh man! Oh um, man! The other one was that <clears throat> a lot of these satellites, you know, like Starlink, for example, are uh, intercommunicate. So you could infect, you could take over one and then spread around the constellation. Oh, wow. And then finally, and he said, probably the most least likely was that you actually take physical mm. control of the propulsion systems. And you could maybe, if it's got enough power, deorbit it. But he said the mo one of the more interesting aspects that they discussed privately uh, was that, you know, these things are going incredibly fast. To get and stay into orbit, you've got to be moving at thousands of miles an hour. And if you can just direct it slightly so it hits another satellite, um, that's going to cause a spread of debris. And now it's very hard to go full Kessler effect in terms of blanketing the Earth in shards of destroyed satellites. But from a wartime situation, for example, if an adversary of the U.S. decided, you know, well, okay, spy satellites aren't usually in in uh, in low Earth orbit, but there are some. It's like if you know, spending a warning. What happens if one of these cubesats goes slightly wrong and intercepts, you know, an American satellite? It's technically doable. These satellites are, and I didn't know this until I saw this article uh, last month in TechCrunch, already dodging space junk at the rate of thousands of times a month. Mm -hmm. uh, SpaceX's orbital communications satellite performed maneuvers 25,000 times in a six-month period, according to a filing with the FCC. So they're already, you know, <laughs> 30 or 40 times a day going, oh, watch it, out. It's yeah. another case of not paying attention to pollution because, yeah, in the mm -hmm. past, there was not a whole lot of attention. I have actually done a little bit of writing about space, so I have some knowledge of this beyond reading stuff on the internet. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you would launch the satellite and then not worry about the payload shroud or mm -hmm. figure it'll, it'll deorbit on its own at some point. And so now there are rules and procedures. We learned that when Skylab landed on us. Right. I'm old enough for that. <laughs> yeah. 
But of course, then you have jokers like the the Russians decided to stage an anti satellite test that that they blew up a satellite. The ISS to yeah. change position with their own cosmonauts on board it. Yeah, just to show the the priorities foot of the crowd. According to TechCrunch, a number of collision avoidance moves has doubled in the uh, since the previous reporting period. So, and some of that is the Russian satellite debris but not yeah, by no, any the means chinese all of have it. done some tests like that as well like now for instance the fcc if you're going to get your low earth orbit satellite broadband constellation approved weirdly enough the fcc has become a very activist regulator of space because yeah if you want to provide communications from low earth orbit you got to talk to them there are 4500 starlink satellites up there that is half the number of all satellites in space now and they're going to 42,000 they say they got FCC approval for the first bunch maybe the FCC should step back a little mm -hmm. bit because you know I was all for Starlink when I first heard the plan I thought oh, this is great Elon's going to provide low cost internet access to every corner of the planet that's not what we got it's very expensive. It is, it is. Uh, yeah, but you know, when I've talked to people who were stuck on AT&T DSL. They're happy they got it. I agree. That's the best reader email, email yeah. I get when they say the Starlink just showed up and yeah. I'm no longer in prison in this 1990s, you know, but straw it's, of it's bandwidth. It's $500 to start. And then I yep. think it's more than a hundred. Now it was a hundred dollars a month. I think it's now $125 a month for the set, for the internet access. It is not a... Affordable alternative for the, most of the world. Well, yeah, but I mean, five percent. I think it's like three or f three to five percent of America is still on dial-up. For goodness sake. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's not just Starlink. The there is Amazon's got Project. Amazon's going to do the same thing. Which you know, yeah. they yeah. need to actually yeah. they need to get moving because they have an FCC deadline. I think three years from I now to get, them to get half moving. of a three thousand <laughs> satellite constellation. I'm very worried. I know space is a big well, place, but <clears throat> I can reassure you a bit. A bit. Uh, because I, I actually, actually interviewed Kessler from uh, oh, the aforementioned from the Kessler syndrome idea, and he said, first is off, he fun at parties? Starlink. <laughs> Sorry, is he fun at he parties? Was, he he was fascinating, to be honest. I'll give him that. Uh, but he did just to reassure you on this point, Leo. He did say that of all the companies that he's been dealing with, then SpaceX have the most advanced plans to deorbit all this stuff in a reasonable and safe manner, uh, which was kind of reassuring. But you, I mean. He also said, <clears throat> if the Kessler, you know, example does happen, it's going to happen slowly over a, a length of time. You know, he did say Hollywood, you know, has this image of, you know... Gravity is not a documentary. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, yeah, I mean, the orbital planes on that thing were all wrong. Yeah. You don't actually get to look at this debris as it goes past. And Who's looking at debris? I'm looking at Sandra it. Bullock. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but, yeah. uh, there was also a great Neil Stevenson book called Seven Eves that talks about yes. uh, the Kessler effect. Well, the premise of it is you could have a chain of reaction of collisions uh, in uh, space around the Earth and block out this, ultimately block out the sun, uh, which wouldn't be good. I think. Well, that solves the global, it solves global the global warming problem, doesn't that'd it? Be the end of, that'd be the end of wildfires. Yeah, kind of terminal <laughs> way, though. You know? yeah. yeah, okay. The ice caps are back. That's the good news. Bad news is in your backyard. I was going to say, bad news, the polar bear is now sunning itself <laughs> on the equator, you know? Yeah. It's not quite uh, all right. Well, I'm. You know, I hope that the FCC and, uh, and uh, related agencies are doing their due diligence uh, on this. Uh, stuff because I worry that we are launching an awful lot of vehicles into space. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor in chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer, or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.